Hello students, welcome to Akash Life. I am your mathematics faculty and today we are going to discuss the AIATS solutions for J Advanced 2019 test number 5A paper 1. This was held on 10th of March 2019 and let us begin the solution discussion of mathematics portion with question number 41. Question 41 says that the number of zeros of the function fx is equal to sigma t from 1 to 1009 t upon x minus t is lambda then the sum of digits of lambda is. Students, all the answers of this section are single integer type. We can expand this summation as fx is equal to put t equal to 1, 1 upon x minus 1, put t equal to 2, 2 upon x minus 2, t equal to 3, 3 upon x minus 3, so on till up to 1009 upon x minus 1009. We have to solve for fx is equal to 0. When you solve for fx is equal to 0 by taking the LCM, the degree of numerator of fx is 1008 is the degree. For this function fx, if I consider only the numerator and then call that numerator as gx, so you can easily observe that g of 1 into g of 2 is negative. Similarly, g of 2 into g of 3 is negative. Similarly, g of 3 into g of 4 is negative and so on till g of 1008 into g of 1009 is negative, where g is the numerator of fx after taking the LCM. Students, we can clearly conclude that this particular polynomial equation will have one root between 1 and 2, second root between 2 and 3, third root between 3 and 4, and so on till it will have a total number of zeros as 1008. Total number of zeros are 1008. Okay? That means lambda is equal to 1008 and the sum of digits of lambda is equal to 9. So 9 is the answer for this question. Okay? Students, there is method 2 for this question also. Method 2 says that we have f dash x which will be a function minus 1 upon x minus 1 whole square minus 2 upon x minus 2 whole square minus 3 upon x minus 3 whole square. So this function, whatever it will come, it will be strictly less than 0 for all x belongs to R. That means this function is continuously decreasing. Okay. Also, we can see that it is not defined at x equal to 1, at x equal to 2, at x equal to 3. So, we can say that it is a piecewise defined function which is always decreasing. So, if it is decreasing function in 1 to 2 and I have already discussed that it has 1 root in 1 to 2. So, by application of derivative, we can again conclude that the number of roots is equal to 1008 by the concept of application of derivative. Okay. So we can see that in 1 to 2, 2 to 3, it is piecewise defined and it is decreasing. So it will definitely have one root in each of the following intervals over there. Okay. Final answer of this question is 9. Let us move on to 42. Question number 42 says that the maximum value of 9x square minus 12x into mod cos x minus 4 sine square x plus 8 is. Students, let us make it a perfect square in cos square x. Let us say the expression is y. 9x square minus 12x into cos x mod minus 4 into 1 minus cos square x plus 8. So this will give you 4 cos square x minus 12 x into mod cos x plus 9 x square plus 4. Students, 4 cos square x can be easily written as 2 mod cos x whole square. So this is 2 mod cos x minus 3 x whole square plus 4. So definitely y minimum will be equal to 4 because when this perfect square is 0, 2 mod cos x is equal to 3x, then we have the y minimum value equal to 4. Okay, so we have the answer of this question as 4. Let us move on to question number 43. Question number 43 says that let f is a function from d of f to r such that fx is equal to under root of sine of cos x plus ln of minus 2 cos square x plus 3 cos x minus 1. Then what is the value of integral x1 to x2 cos x minus half greatest integer where x1 comma x2 belongs to domain of f, the box represents greatest integer function. Students, let us find out the domain for this one. Sine of cos x greater than or equal to 0 and minus 2 cos square x plus 3 cos x minus 1 greater than 0. So from here I will get 2 cos square x minus 3 cos x plus 1 negative that means 2 cos x minus 1 into cos x minus 1 negative. 
so this will give you cos x belonging to half to 1 open so cos x minus half belonging to 0 to half and that means greatest integer of cos x minus half is equal to 0 exactly so that means we don't need to solve even the second condition we don't need to solve x1 x2 the answer is simply 0 because this value is 0 pertaining to the domain of this particular function okay answer is 0 let us move on to 44 question number 44 says that if the shortest distance between the lines r1 vector and r2 vector is lambda then what is the value of 4 sine inverse sine of root 3 by 2 into lambda students we have a1 vector as i plus 2j plus k plus 3k a2 vector as 2i plus 4j plus 5k b1 vector as 2i plus 3j plus 4k b2 vector as 3i plus 4j plus 5k easily we can calculate a2 vector minus a1 vector that will be i cap plus 2j cap plus 2k cap we can easily calculate b1 cross b2 that will be minus i cap plus 2j cap minus k cap magnitude of b1 cross b2 is simply root 6 students what we are supposed to do the shortest distance between two lines we are supposed to apply the direct formula shortest distance is equal to d is equal to a2 vector minus a1 vector dot with b1 cross b2 vector magnitude whole divided by the modulus of b1 cross b2 vector so shortest distance is given to be lambda so lambda will be equal to minus 1 plus 2 minus 2 modulus upon root 6 so this is 1 by root 6 I need this value root 3 by 2 into root 6 so that is root 3 by 2 into root 2 into root 3 that is so this value will reduce to 4 sine inverse sine of root 3 by 2 into lambda will be half so sine inverse sine half is definitely equal to half because half is less than pi by 2 so 4 into 1 by 2 is the answer final answer is 2 okay let us move on to 45 so question number 45 says that let sk where k is 1 2 3 up to 60 denote the sum of infinite geometric series whose first term is k minus 1 upon k factorial and the common ratio is 1 upon k then what is the value of 60 square upon 60 factorial plus summation k from 2 to 60 k square minus 3k plus 1 into sk so first of all let us simplify sk sk is a series whose first term is k minus 1 by k factorial it is an infinite geometrical series so a upon 1 minus r is the sum upon 1 minus 1 by k so that is k minus 1 upon k factorial into k upon k minus 1 so that is 1 upon k minus 1 whole factorial okay now k square minus 3k plus 1 into sk i'm just going to evaluate this value sigma k from 2 to 60 k square minus 3k plus 1 into sk is 1 upon k minus 1 factorial then we have the mod of this so this will be equal to sigma k from 2 to 60 k minus 1 into k minus 2 minus 1 that is k square minus 3k plus 2 minus 1 upon k minus 1 factorial modulus and that is sigma k from 2 to 60 1 upon k minus 3 factorial minus 1 upon k minus 1 so we'll have to start adding the terms we'll get the terms getting cancelled also so if we put 2 in the first term it is 1 upon minus 1 factorial so this complete term goes 0 okay so we have the first term as 0 minus 1 upon 1 factorial modulus plus the second term as put k equals 3 1 upon 0 factorial minus 1 upon 1 factorial 1 upon 0 factorial minus 1 upon 2 factorial 1 upon 0 factorial minus 1 upon 2 factorial 1 upon 1 factorial minus 1 upon 3 factorial fourth term 1 upon 2 factorial minus 1 upon 4 factorial so the terms will get cancelled last term k equals 60 1 upon 57 factorial minus 1 upon 59 factorial so leaving the first term aside i have the cancellation starting from here 
So this term will get cancelled with the next term. 1 upon 3 factorial negative, 1 upon 3 factorial positive. So the final answer will be, this modulus of 1 will be separate. From here you will get 2 terms, 1 upon 0 factorial is 1, 1 upon 1 factorial is 1, minus 2 terms from the last. 1 upon 58 factorial minus 1 upon 59 factorial. So this is simply 3 minus 60 square upon 60 factorial. Definitely, if this term is 3 minus 60 square upon 60 factorial, the bigger terms get cancelled. The complete answer is equal to 3. That is the answer for question number 45. Let us move on to 46. Question number 46 says that the value of limit n tends to infinity, sigma r from 0 to n, n c r upon n raised to power r multiplied by r plus 3 is e minus lambda, then what is the value of lambda? So students, what I am going to do, I am going to create it into the form of a definite integral. So this is limit n tends to infinity sigma r from 0 to n, n c r upon n raised to the power r, this can be written as 0 to 1 x raised to the power r plus 2 dx because it will be x raised to the power r plus 3 upon r plus 3 from 0 to 1 it goes 1 upon r plus 3. So we can rewrite this term as limit n tends to infinity x square into sigma r from 0 to n n c r into x raised to the power r upon n raised to the power r integration from 0 to 1 dx. Students, if you carefully observe this term, it is in the form of a binomial expansion. 1 plus x upon n raised to the power n. Limit n tends to infinity 0 to 1 x square into 1 plus x upon n raised to the power n dx. So we can obviously apply the limit on n taken inside 0 to 1 x square into limit n tends to infinity. 1 plus x upon n raised to the power n. If you carefully observe this limit, this is 1 raised to the power infinity format and it will reduce to e raised to the power x. Okay, 1 minus x upon n minus 1 into n. So e raised to the power x. Simply 0 to 1 x square into e raised to the power x dx. So we have successfully eliminated n. Now we'll solve for x. The answer is very simple e minus 2. So 2 is the answer for this question. Let us move on to 47. Question number 47 based on conic section it says that the area of region in the first quadrant in which the points are nearer to the origin than to the line x equals 5 is lambda. So the value of greatest change lambda is equal to. Students let us have the coordinate system on the plane. We have a line x equal to 5 which will be a vertical line over here at 5 comma 0. I need the set of points which are nearer to origin than to this line. The midpoint of 5 comma 0 and origin is 5 by 2 comma 0. The points which are lying to the left of it and are described under this particular shape or curve which seems like a parabola are my favorable points. Definitely this point is 5 by 2 comma 0. This point is not included in the answer. I need all the points in the shaded region. Okay, not even the boundary. So let us assume a general point on this curve as px comma y. We know that the distance from origin is root under x square plus y square and it is less than the distance of the point from this line is 5 minus x. Students, so this is x square plus y square less than x square minus 10x plus 25. So we have y square less than 25 minus 10x. Yes, it is a parabola. So we have to calculate the area. So what is the area? I will calculate it with respect to x-axis. This point is 0. Put x equal to 0. This point is 25. So area with respect to y-axis, taking a strip parallel to the x-axis, area will be represented as 0 to 25. 25 minus y square whole divided by 10 dy. This will come out to be equal to 25 by 3. And this is given to be equal to lambda. So that is approximately 8.33. Definitely greater change of lambda comes out to be equal to 8. Okay, again a simple question. Let us move on to question number 48. Question number 48 says that in triangle ABC, sine raised to power 2024A into sine B into sine C is equal to 1 minus cos B into cos C. Then greatest change of R upon R is equal to. So R and R are usual notations. So we have the relation sine raised to power 2024A into sine B 
into sin c is equal to 1 minus cos b into cos c small r upon capital r so we can write that sin h to part 2024a is 1 minus cos b cos c upon sin b sin c definitely students a is the angle of a triangle this quantity belongs to open 0 to closed 1 okay so we have this quantity also belonging to the same range 0 less than 1 minus cos b cos c upon sin b sin c less than equal to 1 solving the right part of the inequality i'll have 1 minus cos b cos c less than equal to sin b sin c which will give you cos of b minus c greater than equal to 1 it cannot be greater than equal to 1 it has to be equal to 1 so cos of b minus c equals 1 if it is equals 1 b equals c and if b equals c that means the equality sign is holding true that means sin a is also equal to 1 so sin a is equal to 1 that means a is equal to pi by 2 and b and c both are equal to pi by 4 which means that it is a right angled isosceles triangle okay so r upon r will be simply root 2 plus 1 you can evaluate it from a a and root 2 a over there so this is the answer for capital r upon small r i need the greatest integer this value is approximately 2.41 so the answer will be 2 okay so with this we are done with this section let us move on to next section which contains multiple correct type problems okay mm -hmm.